In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, uh, sometimes it's the case, as you all know from the preacher, uh, from the preacher's point of view that, you know, you don't try to figure out what the readings are trying to say. Today they're sort of screaming at us or uh, kind of in our face. Uh, we hear in the first reading from uh, the book of Genesis, I think it's chapter 12 or around that area, um, the call of Abraham or Abram. And so Abraham is called and Abraham responds and Abraham picks up his roots and leaves the country and moves on and becomes for us, as is alluded to especially in the second reading from Paul, becomes our father in faith. Abraham becomes the one God, uh, the, the one who believes in the one God, the one who articulates that first theology, as it were, around our being created in the image of the one God. And St. Paul, in the second reading to Romans, which of course, as you all know, is deeply theological, tries to get into the ins and outs, sort of the cognitive understanding of what it means for this Jesus to come among us. And Paul's bottom line in this reading, in his reading, is that it is about Abraham. It is about belief. It is about saying yes to the one God who has come to live among us in Jesus. And the default is faith. The default is saying yes, even when we don't understand everything, because we believe. And in the Gospel today, this wonderful reading uh, from St. John, uh, the one that, you know, everybody it's sort of their, their first uh, scripture quote, uh, John 3.16, right? So if you like that, what's your favorite scripture? John 3.16. They might not be able to quote it, but John 3.16, right? And so what we hear in the gospel are the stories around the John 3.16 experience, that fundamental expression that we are made in God's own image and that Jesus came to save us, Right? But we hear the story of Nicodemus. So Nicodemus was an elder of the, of the Israelite community, an elder of the church, right? But he was a teacher who felt, I suppose, <laughs> projection, kind of inadequate, right? And so <clears throat> things weren't clicking the way he thought they should. And so as a teacher, he went to Jesus by night, probably so as not to be embarrassed asking questions of this Jesus person because Nicodemus was supposed to have it together. So he goes to Jesus by night and essentially asks certain questions. And you heard the questions, and Jesus clarifies the need to be born of the Spirit, to be born of the Spirit and water. And Nicodemus probably understood a whole lot about the law, but this whole business of being born of the Spirit, of being drawn into union with Jesus in a way that transcends cognitively just knowing about Jesus, is something very different and much more profound. I say this today because it's been my experience, you know? I remember my first experience out of seminary. It was a date in 1981 in Dayton, Ohio. Well, I was written in the Philippines first, a deacon, but in Dayton, Ohio. And then my first gig, as it were, as a priest, was with another friar, Franciscan, and a, and a, and a third one who was older. We got a house in downtown Cincinnati. I've told this story. And we took in homeless men to live with us, and we sponsored back then Vietnamese, and we, we were vegetarians, and we, you know, did things like 
pierce our ears, and we were pretty like radically fun, um, and in Jesus, and and um, and I thought I had it pretty much together because I just spent years studying theology. Right, I was I was a slow learner. I was a seminary for five years before I was ordained, and and so I was. I thought, well, right, we got it together, and we're priests, and we're in the city, and we're helping all these people. So every morning we would have, because we were Catholic, we were ha we'd have Eucharist. And for Eucharist, typically the people that would show up, everybody in the world was invited, five people would be there, uh, the three that lived there. And then there was a, there was a young um, Lutheran minister who lived up the street. And we said, well, as long as your bishop doesn't know, ours doesn't know, yeah, sure, come and celebrate with us. And so he showed up, and then Norma. There was Norma. Norma lived across the street and down the street. And Norma was about 50 or 60 years old, I would guess. She didn't live, she wasn't a street person, but she obviously lived very simply. I'm sure she struggled with mental illness, and if I were her therapist, I would have diagnosed her, but I was not. Her church, her home church, you know, the one that she counted on Sunday, was called John 316 Church. And she had it together, right? We were all like, theologically trained, and we'd gather for Eucharist, and we would share our words and our thoughtful reflections on the scripture. But Norma, she would talk about Jesus. She would talk about the Jesus whose spirit she had drunk of. She would talk about the Jesus that she knew and in her flaming, you know, wild red hair and, and her, you know, charisms that came and went as God would have it, she was able to unpack that word in ways that the four of us who had been theologically trained couldn't touch. And that's where I got this sense more than a sense, came into a sort of a reality that maybe this Nicodemus story is pretty real for me, and maybe for a lot of us who kind of grow up with a cognitive understanding of who Jesus is, right? We learn our Bible stories, and we go to Sunday school, and we might even go to the Wednesday evening spiel at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church during Lent, and we might do those kinds of things, and we learn about Jesus. And that is great. That is wonderful, and that feeds me. I love to study about Jesus and about Scripture. But what we hear Jesus saying to Nicodemus, and perhaps to us, is what Paul was trying to say to the Romans. It's bigger than that. It's much bigger than some academic experience or cognitive exercise to know Jesus. To be touched by the Spirit and by water in faith. And I think that that's what we're being called to sort of ruminate about or wallow in today. <laughs> Where are we in relationship to a Jesus who desires for us to believe John 3.16? A Jesus who came to be one with us so that we might be saved, or John 3, 17. A Jesus who did not come to condemn the world or to somehow stand over us in judgment, but to call us into union. And it's not about showing up at the pearly gates and standing in judgment. It's about 
What does today feel like? Where am I with this Jesus today? How am I being touched or drawn into a deeper union with this Jesus into the here and now? And this Lenten season is the gift of the church of 40 days before the celebration of Easter, that ultimate experience of resurrection, it's that 40 days, those special days that are given as journey days. We did the labyrinth last week. Those, that journey inward and outward, that path that we find ourselves on, actually whether we like it or not, that journey that we are on that calls us into something more, something deeper, something richer, something that only God, the God of Abraham, and the Trinity, love itself, absolute love, can draw us into. We know love physically and, and mentally and spiritually. But God isn't about knowing love. God is love. Right? And so it's not about knowing about God, like Nicodemus was questioning. It's about being present, being in relationship, it's about love. It's about letting go of whatever it is that gets in the way of my ability to feel loved by God and to know that I am reborn because of that spirit that is mine, given at baptism. <laughs> And so, as we walk through our journey together, the 40 days of Lent and what we have left of it, I think the readings today are just simply inviting us not to just think about stuff, but to make ourselves present to that presence who is always there for us. To allow ourselves to be present to nothing more or nothing less, whether it be in our family, <coughs> among our friends, among the people that we dislike, <laughs> in our political arena, <coughs> no matter where we find ourselves, we are being called to love. Not to know about love, but to love. And we are nourished on our journey, on our trail, on our path at this table. So the readings today, I believe, are just an invitation, uh, another invitation after last week's invitation, and there will be more, to allow yourself to be present to a presence of God wherever you find yourself this day, and tomorrow, and the next. So that when Easter comes in time, in a few weeks, perhaps, just perhaps, by the grace of God, each and every one of us will have a deeper and richer and more profound experience of this spirit which has been given to each of us at baptism. Amen. <laughs>